us once again make clear that which most do not seem to understand. This podcast is marked as explicit, not because it offers a mature look into the world of topics not meant for the young or immature, but because it mucks about in very appalling, gormless, and tasteless filth whilst reveling in it. Cinema Psyops aims to drag you down into the very same muck filled with sexual deviancy and decayed morality. Cinema Psyops. They heap weekly praise on such filth while discussing the most base and animalistic urges, reviewing the lowest common denominator of low-grade trash ever considered film. Seventh consecutive week of Cinema PsyOps. I'm your host, Court, the guy who takes a hit of a fucking vape and then decides to do the intro of the show, coughing his ass off off mic, making Matt laugh at him. <laughs> that was good. I'm the main host of your show, and my laughing co-host is Matt! Yeah, fuck up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to like fucking cram a bunch of Fig Newtons in and be able to get some energy to be able to do the show after yeah. moving furniture like first thing in the morning on a fucking Sunday. Right. Oh, uh, this is the man, worst. I'm, I'm dehydrated. I've got no fucking energy and I'm just trying to get a sugar rush going just enough to be able to get this fucking episode going. Yeah, right. Come on. Let's do it. 
All right, I'm pretty sure it is 367 is the number that we are actually on, he says with a mouthful of Fig Newton. Yeah, all those Fig Newtons. Eat them. Fucking never got Fig Newtons, but you this know, is... for all you people who do, you take them. <laughs> I have a special place in my heart for Fig Newtons because it was something that my grandma had around, and she would always kind of like let me eat them whenever she was watching me when I was a little kid. So I have all fond right. memories of Fig Newtons with my grandma. Oh. And, and I, I, you know, the way that my memory works, I get some of those to basically like I can almost relive them and actually be back there because my, my recall is almost perfect yeah. for a lot of things like that, which is a blessing and a curse, but that's why I like them and I find them very comforting, which is a good thing to actually have for when we're doing the episode because we've been really bleak and I want to try and bring back some of that, that, hey guys, it doesn't matter the world's falling apart and we're all going to die. We're just going to have fun. Yeah, you know, that the come show on does. everyone, let's have fun. <laughs> I think we did okay the first two weeks of this year, but we were pretty fucking grim, and I think we need to kind of come up and out of that just a little bit. And, of course, we're talking about Endgame, which is another Italian post-apocalyptic kind of film. Well, I think it's kind of weird that uh, I didn't see uh, Tony Stark or Captain America or anybody in this, so... Mm, Yeah, that's a much better budgeted Endgame. That's very true. (laughs) Now, the thing that I did not realize whenever I grabbed this for the show, because there was like a three-pack that Severin released. Yeah. I wanted Raiders of Atlantis and to buy Raiders of Atlantis on its own was almost as much as buying this three pack for this okay. special sale that they had. So I was like, well, fuck, I'll just throw in a couple extra bucks and then I'll have two other movies to talk about on the show, you know? And I, yeah. I'm i glad I did it. I actually have enjoyed all three of them um, for their cheap and stupid like ways in some cases and in others actually pretty entertaining. Raiders of Atlantis is probably the most insane fucking action movie I've ever seen. Like it makes literally no sense at all. And I, yeah. th- and I just don't think that they even intend Tended it to Warriors of the Year 2072 actually had some social commentary that they tried to get out there. You know, Fulci was trying to do his usual thing. And uh, when I said that, I think I said something about this is one of his better, you know, non horror efforts. I should state and clarify that it's one of his better action efforts. I've seen some other action films that he's done that I am not a fan of, yeah. right? But like, obviously, his Gialli, some people wouldn't consider Gialli horror. And if that's the case, I just want to state that his Gialli is unimpeachable. The Gialli that he made way, way back when that genre was like at the height of its popularity is some of the best stuff. Like Don't Torture a Duckling is like one of the most incredible Jally I've ever seen. Nice. So, you know, and we, we, ever, yeah, we, we, done that we did that. We did that with uh, Jamie Salmon. That's right. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we had really, like, I mean, it's a really beautiful film and there's so many yeah. layers to it and it's really well done and really like, you know, thought out and, you know, nothing like Warriors of the Year 2072. <laughs> you know, like it's actually so much more uh, a, a better put together film than Warriors of the Year 2072. So when I went, when I said that that was one of his better ones, I meant it's one of his better action ones. I want to clarify that for for anybody out there that thinks that I would be dunking on any of his jally, because that is not true at all. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not his. You'd get pretty pissed about that. (laughs) Well, yeah, I'm I'm a lot more mellow than I used to be. I've been working on my anger and my my responses to things. I no longer punch people in the throat for not liking a Jallo film. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're pretty protective of Fulci, so... (laughs) Well, that's why I wanted to clarify my statements from last week. Yeah. This week, though, Joe D'Amato brings us one of his best, if not his absolute best, and the man himself even said this is his favorite film this week. Oh, And I would definitely say that it is one of his best films, if not his best film that I've ever seen so far. I mean, this is the man that brought us Porno Holocaust, after all. That is true. Yeah. But, I mean, still, (laughs) good times. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, not even a little. Yeah. But we also got a little uh, Laura Jemsner in this film, yeah. too. That was a nice surprise. So there's actually That's... some really good stuff to talk about. I think we can be a little more upbeat this week is all I'm getting at. I think so. Well, I think we're going to be fine. <laughs> I definitely want to eat a f- couple more Fig Newtons because I am fucking starving after moving all that furniture around. But we got to right? get this fucking show done before you got shit that you also have to do. <sighs> So we're not going to fuck around anymore. We're going to take a little break here. We're going to play the intro from our new owner and proprietor, Kevin. I know it says that it's still going till June, but the important part for this is the fact that it's an intro to Kevin. Yeah. (laughs) And after that, we're going to have our Legion Patreon ad and a little bit of music right after this. Hey, everyone. This is Kevin. As many of you probably have heard, Bo will be heading back to school to become a teacher. Congratulations, Bo. As such, I'll be taking over the reins, managing, and spreading the good word of Legion Podcast. To kickstart things off... As an added thank you for patrons in June, Legion plans to have Steam Code giveaways for current Patreon backers. A random person will be picked from the Patreon every other week or twice per month, and the winners can choose from the available Steam Codes. Thank you so much for supporting Legion Podcast. You can reach me on Twitter or the Legion Discord group. My username is at LonelyBob. 
See you around. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com, or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now... Back to the cutting room. So on the Pirate Radio edit, I just played something that hopefully fit in with Endgame because we're trying to get this fucking show done and I didn't plan ahead for that. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> hey, whatever. We're listening to it right now. It's playing underneath our voices before we get ready to go ahead and cover the film. Now, if I'm you're jamming to it. Now, if you're Oops. listening to the main feeds, it's going to be another soundtrack because I actually Ooh. was able to, I'm going to be able to get some music right out of the film for that episode as well. But why don't we stop talking around the film and sort of about some things about the film and let's talk everyone through the film, which is Endgame. No, not that one. <laughs> no, not the good one. The other one. All right. Hey, this Endgame. is still good. It's just, how can it's... you compare it to that big of a budget of a flick, right? Yeah. yeah well, I mean, you can't. Yeah. But I'm just, you know, I like giving people shit. It's certainly not All fair right. to do it. Endgame, the first 20 minutes. First, we start out, there's a new nuclear war because cuz uh i believe that, it's pronounced nuclear 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 i'm making fun of uh, a former president who is a war criminal that gets away uh, with it from painting and i was doing a simpsons thing so <laughs> we're we're all doing stuff now uh <laughs> that's how this show works we're all doing stuff we're all doing stuff everyone's doing stuff and it's it's just gonna be great so i wouldn't promise them that uh, well yeah that's uh all right well fine whatever um it'll be adequate and keep you entertained there you go so uh anyway in the as he says with a mouth full of fig newton uh <laughs> in in the wreckage of society we see laura gemser she's watching wandering around and we're like hey great it's laura gemser it's always a, a pleasure to see laura gemser not uh, a fan of this outfit um it no. feels like they're they're basically saying yes this is laura gemser but you can only see her face to verify that it's Laura Gemser. We don't even see her hair for yeah. almost the entirety of the movie. Yeah, it's like no good times. I, they really think they did this just to destroy us more. Um, well, I mean, like we don't deserve access to her body, but no, I just want to state that not at all. I think that she has gorgeous hair, and the fact that they kept yeah. it wrapped up, I mean, that just takes away something but, that you could have in the film that would be say what you, visually stunning. Say, say what you want. If it's a nuclear apocalypse, of course you're going to be covered head to toe like that from radiation and shit. I know, and that makes me feel sexist now that you said that. And I'm just going to shut I, the fuck up. I'm just sad. Same here. I'm just sad. I'm always sad. But I mean, that's besides the point. She's wandering around, and we see these people who are kind of mutants. In and they are killed by what could be only called stormtroopers, Nazi pricks. Um, 
So, uh, we're still here, but hey, we still have games in this time, and that is actually our first clip. Since it was started back in 2012, can be followed on your video contactors in any corner of this planet. The zone chosen for the event lies between 22nd and 33rd Street in the port area. The game is slated to start in about 20 minutes, and will end at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. The three hunters will therefore have 12 hours to track down their prey. In this case, Ron Shannon. Now, this is the seventh time that Endgame champion Shannon has volunteered to be the prey, after competing successfully 22 times as the hunter. Although Shannon is reputed to be unbeatable, the odds are slightly against him, maybe because luck eventually runs out for everyone, even for one of the game's all-time greats. Each player is allowed to carry one firearm and two other weapons of his own choice. Anyone found with additional weapons is automatically disqualified. As you know, the prey has the option of surrendering if he's still undiscovered after the first six hours. But if he chooses to do so, he is penalized by the loss of points in the championship standings and is not eligible for start money. Ron Shannon has never surrendered. So tonight's event promises to be an epic encounter and one that will keep us all glued to our screens well into the AM of tomorrow. And now, an important question. Do you know the favorite food of Endgame champions? It's Life Plus. The high-protein energy tablet tones up your body fibers and maintains your sexual press. Be a man among men. Buy Life Plus. Just five minutes before the end game championship for 2025 begins. And here's Shannon now, walking tall, full of the confidence that seven times the winner can give a man. He looks a little grim, but who wouldn't with his life in the balance? He is a man ready to kill or be killed. A responsibility the average soldier carried on his shoulders in the days when differences were settled by wars. Shannon's ready. The rules allow him a half hour lead on his pursuers. And with hunters like we have tonight, he's gonna need every minute. They're a formidable band indeed. Here come the hunters. Woody Aldrich, eight times a hunter and twice as the prey. Strong as an ox, agile as a cat, I pity his opponent. Gate Mantrax, martial arts champion and instructor, making his third appearance in the major leagues at international level. Last and by no means least, Kurt Karnak, Shannon's most dangerous adversary. They grew up together in the rubble of the city and their rivalry goes deep. Karnak is a veteran of 15 endgame events, all of them as a hunter. Only once in the past has he come up against Shannon and on that occasion, the contest was declared a draw after playtime ran out. Now over to the studio for local news. We'll be back on your screen in a few minutes with all the shock moments live in Endgame 25. What's horrible is you can't even get away from horrible sponsorships from shit energy drinks, even in the nuclear apocalypse. It's still there. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually kind of cool that they put that forced product placement in. But yeah. the, the influence on this one really does feel more a rollerball than uh, Death Race 2000, because I said that there was some influence on that with the hunt. The yeah. hunting people theme seems to be really prevalent in these three films. <laughs> yeah, it seems like uh, when it's all over and, you know, you're kind of getting into the shit of the post-apocalyptic world, you just hunt people, and that's that's the new sport. <laughs> it's actually kind of a little bit more of an optimistic outlook on what would happen with humanity because yeah. at least it's organized and there are fucking rules and the people are somewhat willing participants and they get paid a shitload for it so yeah. and it's it's in our past we did that with fucking gladiators where we were entertained by them murdering each other so yeah but it, most of them were slaves so right right so i mean it does have a dark history and it's always going to be wrong to hunt people or so yeah. i'm told yes <laughs> my lawyers are advising me that to say that it is wrong to hunt people <laughs> and how many lawyers is that again <laughs> enough to make me listen <laughs> <laughs> we should move on. All right. Well, the mil we uh, see some generals. They're talking in a conference room, and they're like, hey, listen, we need to wipe out all these people. They're talking about some certain people that, you know, we don't know about. And uh, he's like, yeah, we got to. And uh, he goes, but we need to do it in absolute secrecy. And he goes, well, don't worry. Everyone's going to be watching the game so much, we could drop another nuclear bomb and no one would notice. Sadly, uh, that is actually true of humanity at any point, I think. Yes, yes, especially, you know, with the TikToks and their Snapchatties and their, you know, social medias. Okay, um, they'll get off your lawn, Matt, chill. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> now, the goddamn kids are not living life the way I thought people should live life. So they're wrong. Wow, that seems fucked up. All right, so... <laughs> 
Uh, Lord, uh, LG, as I, uh, noted her down there. LG, she gets chased down by some mutants, but, uh, we see Ron, who is our titular hero and, like, t- captain of all the games and shit. He saves her. Uh... She then tells him that uh, if he survives this, she's got a job for him. Well, then we see a bunch of military guys busting a room full of people who are watching the games and just absolutely blow them the fuck away. Just kill a lot of them. Uh, you know, with their fucking Nazi machine guns and looks. So I find okay. it funny they're all wearing uh, gas masks when no one else is. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that is unless the people have already been out in the radiation or whatever. And they're, yeah, it's or it just might be to complete the look. However, uh, the production di- design is definitely some of the finest we've ever seen in a Joe D'Amato film in this. I have to yeah. I have to laud that. All the costumes match and look like they were tailor-made for the people that are wearing them. They don't ever have a lot of people that are in these outfits. That's like maybe max of like 12. And then when you get further distances, there's less gas masks and more just like leather coats and they don't match as much, but it's just there to fill in. But yeah. when they have these kinds of scenes where it's a concentrated number of soldiers, Soldiers, they look terrifyingly all the same. Yes. Like the, all the soldiers are fairly the same there. Yeah. The uniformity is almost exact on a lot of these guys, especially the gas mask guys, particularly like numbers of six to 12. Um, I yeah. just wanted to bring that up here because the production design is really some of the finest that he's had in a lot of the D'Amato films that we've watched. And I, I just, I, I, him saying that this is his favorite film that he's ever done. And also, I think I've read somewhere that he said that he feels this is his best film as well. And right now, the evidence that we've seen just from these Stormtroopers guys showing up and doing this fucking massacre, even the bullet hits and all of that stuff actually looks like it was like there was more money to this than some other films that D'Amato has done. It really does. Yeah. But I mean, you can tell uh, there had to have been some money in this because they did a pretty good job. Yeah. The bullet hits in this are the finest out of all three of the films that we've covered. Like the effects in this were really well done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really well done. So good job, movie. Yeah. So Uh, what I'm saying is I think he's right. I think this is probably his best film. Yeah, maybe. I I guess I can't really argue that this could be his best. I haven't seen all his films. So but if he says it, then, you know, I'm going to believe him. Certainly of all the ones that we have watched, it's his best. Yes. Yes. That much is for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, then Ron gets attacked by a hunter. Uh, it's, uh, and he kills him. Uh, then he runs around a bit more. Then he gets uh, another one after him. And this is the, like the, uh, the Kung Fu one. So we get some fighting there, some pretty good martial arts, but Ron still comes out on top because he's the best. Well, there's, uh, the way that they did a lot of the fights in this were what the actors could naturally do. There wasn't, yeah. there wasn't really a lot of training or preparation or editing to make the fights look better. So it was just like these quick run throughs and they're kind of fumble things as well. And it actually looked like an actual fight in some cases too because they were just you know not that skilled and they made they would miss shots or whatever and it didn't look like they were you know giving it all that they possibly could because maybe they don't know yeah <laughs> but it still looked pretty good for a fight right it still See? looked okay it's for this time frame for a fight yes absolutely but that's something that even george eastman actually mentions where oh, okay uh the actor that got involved with some of the fighting later on he actually does he's also the screenwriter he's that big tall motherfucker that ate the baby in uh anthropophagus oh all right <laughs> Jesus Christ. He shows up in like every Joe D'Amato film practically. Like yeah. him and Laura Jemsner. Like if uh, basically if we go in through the career of Laura Jemsner, we're going to have a bunch of fucking George Eastman and a bunch of fucking Joe D'Amato in our future. Well, I don't I don't blame George Eastman. Laura Jemsner was talented. I'm actually serious about that. So, well yeah, if one thing that this movie definitely proves that she actually did have some acting ability even though she was yeah. dubbed in this. Um she does act, there's there's moments where she actually has to stretch her acting chops a little bit and not just be this knockout gorgeous woman that can seduce anyone and like a lot of the films that we've seen her in you know yeah yeah no then you're exactly right um sorry <laughs> apparently no, i have a fine. lot more to say about this fucking movie than i thought i would that yeah, right jesus christ uh let's see here so he run uh so anyway uh then the third hunter starts shooting at him and run runs away and he sees lg and she tells him that she can help but he has to do exactly as she says well the dude comes in looking for Ron and LG's just hanging out there and she telepathically then talks to Ron and that's our next clip. Shannon. Shannon. Kurt is moving towards you now. He has death in his mind. Your death. Even though you're his friend. That's the way the game's played. Are you a mutant? Yes. Brain mutation developed my telepathic power. 
Some of us can use Telethink to contact others. Why contact me? I have to leave the city with a group of companions by tomorrow and we need a guide. We pay very well. Why me, and not someone else? Because you know what lies beyond the city limits. And you could protect us. The penalty for harboring a mutant is two to four years hard labor and confiscation of private property. If I don't help you, you're going to lose the game. You're cornered like a rat. What can you do? Be your eyes. When I say now, he'll be ten feet below you at twelve o'clock. And you better aim straight. If you miss, we'll have no guide. Hope you can see straight. I'm ready. So anyway, with the help of LG, Ron is able to d- defeat that hunter. Okay, and they I like that he go- had to cheat to be able to defeat fucking George Eastman. Yeah, right. Yeah, George Eastman was like, "Fuck, all right, fine. <laughs> you got Lord Gemser helping you. What do I got? <laughs> Nothing. You got a fucking psychic Lord Gemser who can see through my eyes. Not yeah. fair, dude. <laughs> nah, yeah. Listen, man, I'm I'm just saying. It, we need to talk. I believe this is what the kids call a dick move. Yeah, <laughs> I believe this is what they call in the old country as some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, after he defeats him, he does not kill him as the camera crew comes around to film him with the final kill. But he uh, lets him go. He shows mercy. And the announcer comes on. And that is our next clip. After beating the third hunter and winning today's event. Endgame champion Shannon has spared a man's life. Garnack now owes him one, which means that when they meet for the rematch, Shannon will be the outright favorite. Well, the points from this championship have put him so far ahead in the standings, he's almost certain to be the season's champion. And here is Ron Shannon. Once again, his reputation is more than justified. Now, after the strain and tension of this sensational victory, Endgame champion Shannon can't wait to drink a glass of Life Plus. The high-protein, easy-to-assimilate energy drink. Here, drink it up, friend. You deserve it. Help, Shannon! So he tells that guy to go pound sand because when Lord Jemser asks you to help, you you go help. That's just that's just how that goes. <laughs> I mean, uh, you can laugh all you want, but you know I'm right. She's also so, psychic, uh, but, so she could actually be manipulating him, and he'd have no idea. That's also true. Uh, by the way, that is also the end of the first twenty minutes. Okay, I'm just gonna say it right now. This first twenty minutes is definitely more solid filmmaking and a lot more entertaining and more captivating than the previous two films that we covered in this three pack that I got my hands on. Yeah. And uh, more than that, it's actually the first like almost thirty minutes. But there's no actual good place to go to to stop this. That first thirty minutes almost just has to be together. Yeah, this is a really breakneck pace. This does not yeah. hang out very long without some kind of an action sequence. Joe yeah, D'Amato is, threw every fucking thing at the screen in this one. This is heavier in all of the uh, in action than it is in dialogue for sure. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Whenever you're no. watching a film like this this is replicating mad max or at least attempting to they even yeah. dress their hero up very much like the road warrior <laughs> yeah exactly yeah he's wearing the leather jacket and shit like that right right so, he has yeah. metal plates protecting him and stuff the gun and everything his his profile and how he's dressed it's very clearly making an attempt at mad max too you know definitely yeah. Uh, oh yeah but it's also taking the lessons of the pacing of that film too and just not really giving you a break and just showing you there is no breathing room in this world no matter what it is that you do to survive you know this is definitely hustle 24 7 or you're gonna fucking die like yeah it's, right it things are bad for everyone <laughs> yeah it's not uh it's everything's bad the world's broken and uh it's just uh action now <laughs> the revolution apparently has been televised is what we're getting at. yeah 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 everything uh, unfortunately, uh, the people lost the revolution. <laughs> yeah, and it's televised as it's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a bleak fucking society that we're seeing here. But oh, yeah. our our yeah. our man is totally Mad Maxing the whole time. You yes, know? definitely. I do not buy him as a Mad Max type at all. No, no, that blonde hair, blue eyed bro. Nah, you got to be a little bit more hard. He's known uh, over here as Al Cliver, and he is excellent as a supporting character in multiple films, including Zombie. He oh, was, nice. Yeah, he was 
was excellent in Zombie, but yeah, he just doesn't have. That's that... where I thought I'd recognized him from. Yeah, Jesus. he was one of the guys on the ship that took him to yeah. the island in Fulci's Zombie. Uh, the the guy that you should really have playing the role that Al Cliver is playing is George Eastman because he can carry that kind of action bravado guy, you know. And all you have to do is look at his tall, giant, fucking manly ass, and you're like, of course he's the fucking hero, you know? Yeah, of course. But in this time frame, right? They're trying to make the guy be like as much as Max as possible. So they just have Al Cliver do the role. And I just don't, I don't know, man. He just doesn't, he doesn't bring that kind of machismo that you would want or that, that quiet cool where it's like, you know, he can fucking rip people apart. He's just done with it. He just doesn't have any of that to him. Yeah, no, yeah. None of that quiet cool. None of that. Yeah. They should have, they should have made a motherfucker, uh, the the guy who played the, the, not, he's not really even the main bad guy. He's just the main hunter. Uh, the, the director the sh- or George Eastman should have been the star of this fucking movie. Yeah. I just literally said that dude. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I'm just agreeing with you, I guess. In a yeah. Sense. Yeah. I mean, he wrote it. He should have been fucking acting in it or you know what? Let's take the wasted time that we had with Fred Williamson from the previous movie in Fulci where the Warriors 2027, right? Yeah. Let's take him out of that movie. Let's throw him in Al Cliver's role. And I guarantee you, you're going to buy every bit of the shit that they say this guy can do. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, Yeah. Big time. And seriously, that is the whole of my complaint about anything having to do with this movie because everything else, it hits where it's trying to perfectly. Why do you think George Eastman didn't want to put himself in the starring role? You think he just felt Uh, like that shouldn't be him? I just think he always gets villainous or more anti-hero roles just because of how big he was. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Yeah. Because he just works better that way. And also, it's probably more fun. It's probably boring to be the hero for him. Yeah, there are some There are some actors who just like to to dig their teeth into some more, you know, dark stuff. But also, he was the writer of the film, so maybe he just pulled back to be able to, you know, kind of make sure that the writing was adhered to or something. Who knows? You know? Yeah. Who absolutely yeah. knows? But the thing is, Al Cliver just doesn't have the gravitas in whatever way you want to look at it to pull yeah. off this character. When he's doing the action, he's absolutely fine. It's just the actual acting whenever he's reacting to people and he's trying to act like all heartless and tough and to, mm-hmm. to pull off the quiet cool, he just can't do it. Yeah, right. So, all right. Well, but we got what we got. Yeah, Still, it, it's I'm a, not going to complain too much. Yeah, no, then that's literally the whole of my complaint. But the thing is, you forget about that pretty fast because then they just kind of change the character from trying to be like Mad Max and he does get his own sort of thing to him and he's a lot more believable. Plus, they bring in a goddamn barbarian dude and after that you just pretty much have to press the i believe button and have fun and yeah, shut the yeah, fuck right. up yeah i know there he's he's about ready to go uh get his shit going and uh <laughs> well you should just actually bring the barbarian guy in and let people hear about this motherfucker then yeah 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 let's uh let's just get things going here i guess um all right the next 20 minutes uh starts uh lg's being taken away uh by some stormtroopers uh nazi pricks and i mean <laughs> you can't tell me that's not what they had him dressed up as they had two s's on their fucking foreheads for most of the gas masks too yeah right two red s's Jeez. that look suspiciously like the ss lightning bolt s's yes yeah yeah so i mean come on help me out here <laughs> definitely nazi bastards yeah it's so. kind of obvious nazi yeah yeah. Well, Ron comes up and of course Ron kills him because fuck off. You can't, uh, you know, you can't take her and he's a badass and they're not. So he kills him. Uh, and the generals, we cut back to them. They're getting updated and they're scared. And they said, we need to find the boy. That's all they said. Uh, so LG and Ron, they, she takes him to this room and that's where all full of the dead people. That's where all those, the soldiers killed all those people during the game, but they find a man and a boy still alive. Well, they get back to Ron's place, and that's our next clip. This view never fails to fascinate. It's one of those sights that has given man delusions of grandeur. But it's a world in agony. How much longer do you think it's going to last? I don't have to tell you what I'm thinking. Oh, no, you're wrong. I don't possess the gift. Unfortunately, I'm not a mutant. I'm only a neurosurgeon who wants to help them, instead of being afraid and wanting to kill them. With help and guidance, perhaps one day we can create a new race. A society where they will all have the faculty to read each other's minds. A society without deception and incomprehension. Such a race might even conquer the world. And then the universe. I'm still waiting, you know to hear what you want from me. Will you lead them out of the city to a place 200 miles from here? 
You only have one chance in a million of getting out of here. They'd cut you to small pieces before you got 50 miles. Talk money to him, Professor. He'll be easier to convince that way, I promise you. You will be paid a considerable sum in gold by those who will be there to meet us. How do you know there's going to be someone there? If we arrive there on time, there will be. But we have to be there two days from now, on December 25th. If we fail to keep the appointment, we will lose our lives, and you will lose your gold. And we all know you got to have that gold, man. Gold! So, <laughs> all right, well, now we, we have a story going. Now we got something going on. <laughs> yeah, okay, so there's enough of a society to where gold still matters. And yeah. it's still precious. And, I, I th- and yeah. there's enough of a society where they have broadcast TV where people hunt each other. And where money still means something, you know, in this world. Right. But we never see that society. We only ever see, like, the outlying parts. And the cities that we see don't clearly seem like they have that, unless they're all just people living in skyscrapers, like, Land of the Dead style or whatever, you know? Yeah, right. So, yeah. I mean, exactly. (laughs) But it's hinted at, and it's, it's talked about, so you're supposed to assume that it's there, but all you really see is, like, decrepit desolation everywhere. Yeah, right. And, I mean, that's... Well, I mean, it's a telltale sign of a dystopian future movie, right? It's always just devastation and depression everywhere. With a hint of some kind of upper crust people living a very classy life with a lot of money yeah. to where gold bars still matter somehow. Yeah, yeah. But somehow money is still a thing and still can control people <laughs> instead of just having shelter and food. <laughs> And, like, something to protect you from radiation besides just shelter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, you know, we just forget that there apparently is, there's no erated areas uh, anywhere anymore. So, uh, good for them. I guess uh, everything the scientists ever told us about radiation and everything was a fucking lie. Because all these people are living fucking pretty. When really, you know, it's going to be thousands of years before if there's a full nuclear thing like that, anything else happens. You got a point. Yeah, but fuck it. What, what am I supposed to do? I'm not I'm not here for nobody. No. <laughs> what you need to so, do is just enjoy the film and finish yes. discussing it for our audience. All right. I'm just I was just discussing the film. <laughs> what I mean is your notes on the film so we can get through this. Oh god, you want me to read those? Jesus Christ. All right. Um anyway, uh, <laughs> I was born to lead, not to read. To read. The general meets up with the hunter that Ron spared, uh Mr. Eastman, and he's you know, shooting his gun and shit. He like he's doing target practice with a shotgun and that makes no sense in the world unless he's firing slugs maybe yeah but i'm like that's just okay but it's still a shotgun i don't i'm fine no 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 a slug is a solid fucking like chunk of metal like usually uh, it could be a ball but it's basically like a bullet that is the size of the gauge of the actual shell that's what a slug is so it would fire like an actual bullet and it would be like the old school style rifle in a shotgun especially if it doesn't have any bore to it all right so it would basically be like the equivalent of like a musket where it goes at a slower speed and fucking really tears through stuff but you could still technically be target practicing with a slug and that's what i'm just assuming is supposed to be in there because otherwise it does not make any fucking sense yeah yeah because uh, normally you would not uh, for anybody who maybe doesn't uh, know about guns you wouldn't really do target practice with a shotgun well and <laughs> it, it doesn't have a spread it's like a regular yeah. gun whenever it hits yeah. so it has to be a slug it has otherwise to be it's a stupid slug. yeah 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 or else this movie just makes no sense it yeah. could, lord mo- lord knows this movie would do anything not to make sense <laughs> <laughs> right whenever they show people shooting shotguns in any kind of way where it just puts one little hole you just have yeah. to assume or not little hole but one hole in the center like a normal shot you just have to assume that it's a slug in the shotgun otherwise you have to admit to yourself that the film is stupid yeah and we don't want to do that right so it's a slug yeah it's a slug so anyway uh the (laughs) jesus christ we really got on it right there um we, we really were on it. Uh, anyway, so the general's like, hey, we need some help. You know, he's got these people. We need them. Um, you know, we need to find him. And, you know, our dude's like, yeah, that sounds like your guys' problem, not mine. So, uh, sorry, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and later on, Ron visits a trainer uh, who, you know, it's like a gym and all these guys are all training how to fight and all this shit. Um, 
So Ron's visiting a trainer, or he trains him, and he goes, hey, I need some guys. I need some guys. And he goes, well, none of these guys will do. Uh, they're all just training. They, they're not going to be able to do what you want because he knows he's heading out of the city. So then he meets one guy. Uh, his name's Ninja. I believe the guy actor who played Ninja was in the last game or the last movie, right? That we did. I I didn't recognize him enough to be able to say for sure. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I thought he was uh, one of the uh, dudes Running Man had to beat last movie. So <clears throat> Ninja's the guy with the scar down his face. Yeah, and he's like the well, he's obviously like the kung fu expert. They send a guy to try to attack him, and Ninja kills him. <laughs> so he, yeah, I'm not know. I'm not a hundred percent sure if he was in. I know that I have seen almost all the actors that are in this film in another Italian film at some point and I recognize their faces like, but I the, couldn't the, place Ninja anywhere to be honest the owner of the gym I've seen him in a ton of shit I'll call him Cyclops for the rest of the movie because he has an eye patch but yeah, I, yeah I've i seen him in a shit ton of movies we've done yeah so that guy particularly but Ninja himself I don't really recall right. I, I recognize that actor from the last movie and that's the only time I've ever seen him but yeah the last movie okay Um, I don't doubt that that's the case it's just that I didn't clock it yeah then he goes through this little town and uh, he gets uh, stopped by this group and this guy has a really weird high pitched voice I almost clipped it but then I was like eh, it wasn't enough I was worried uh, you were going to clip it because I was like my god this is so irritating it's I to know. try and make him more of a comic relief because that's yeah. the kind of character that he is but uh-huh. oh my god it's so irritating it's so high pitched it it's, it's worse annoying. than that Godzilla movie that one brother that we did like one of our first yeah. episodes where it was the Godzilla versus Zebra yes <laughs> yes that, that one like and you were doing an impression of it and i was like please yeah. stop that's so irritating you're like no <laughs> i'm like fucking stop no never I don't <laughs> <to> stop <laughs> you Can't were a child stop. back then i was i, I, I still am uh <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> some of it's been beaten out of you though you can tell you can tell yeah life life took care of a lot of th- shit for you so uh <laughs> <laughs> life helped life broke your uh, will on my behalf yeah yeah right so uh then uh but he's like you know you can't have you know you're never gonna get by and ron's like talks to a big guy who's with him um uh, uh, i think his name's ox and he goes hey I'm, I'm hiring people there's gold in it for you why would you listen to this you know scrawny little nothing and the guy's like i'm not this scrawny little nothing and uh he's like come on uh, and then as soon as they're getting ready to shoot, Ninja actually shoots the gun out of the nerd's hand. And so we saw Ninja joined him. So there you go. <laughs> so this is the barbarian guy I was talking about for no reason at all. Yeah. We have this we giant have barbarian. bearded barbarian looking motherfucker. So the apocalypse is bad enough to where some people revert to dressing like barbarians. Yeah. But it's still good enough to where a guy like Al Cliver can get decked in head to toe handmade leather. Yes. All of that. I mean, come on. What do you what do you want from people, man? <laughs> Dystopian I'm, futures, man. It's wild. I'm just gonna say it right now. This reminds me of the kind of thing you caught on USA Up all night and thought was amazing oh, as a kid. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, this this is that kind of movie for sure. So I'm yeah. I'm having a little bit of fun at its expense, but the fact that it is this high concept and just going for it, you really do just have to enjoy. You really do. Yeah, you really do. This is quintessential. Like, all right. 80s t- style film right here. Yeah, you're just, you're just gonna have some fun and don't take it too serious, people. It's a fucking movie. Just uh, enjoy yourself. Um, <laughs> Guys dress like a barbarian. I know, I know. Just like, and they also all wear face paint like fucking uh, uh, the barbarian and uh, the warlord when they were the powers of pain from <laughs> old style fucking shit like that they're all wearing face paint because you know fuck it in dystopian future you better wear some fucking face paint motherfucker well and it it looked like the lineup of Susie and the banshees was actually in some of the background of the crowd shots whenever they were doing the hunter and prey tv show the people that were clamoring to see what was going on there you know they had very punker and like goth and goth punk looks to a lot of that audience so Uh it's like this movie that is just out of time it's essentially like after the world ends people are just going to dress however the fuck they want and you're going to deal with it is basically what's going on here we we say it's out of time but that's what every dystopian future in the 80s looked like and i don't care who was making the fucking movie (laughs) yeah kind of it's just just the way that it went i mean it all kind of springs from mad max too anyway yeah 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 you know you're gonna have face paint you're gonna have shoulder spikes 
Uh, you know, I mean, holy shit, there's a whole tag team called the fucking Road Warriors. Right, right. Like, if your fucking movie doesn't have people in it that look like they should be, like, working with the Road Warriors from WCW, yeah, yeah. you got a yeah, problem. Yeah. You got a problem. Then you don't really have an 80s dystopian movie. Yeah. <laughs> your dystopian movie sucks. <laughs> we can move on now. I'm sorry. All right. No, you're fine. Uh, then uh, they go to a bar and uh, they find this older guy and uh, uh, Ron wonders how his uh, reflexes are. And Barbarian goes, oh, let's find out. And uh, it turns out pretty fucking good. Uh, yeah, it, it, he throws a knife at him and the old guy catches it and throws it right back down to the table. So yeah, not bad. That guy was a stunt coordinator, by the way. I saw that in the oh, interview was it? with George Eastman. Yeah. Nice. There you go. That's good stuff. Then as Ron leaves, the general uh, comes up and he's like, hey, you can't hide forever. And it's like, fuck, I, I was kind of hoping we could. And um, so uh, the general has all his troops and it looks like Ron's about ready to bite it. But uh, fortunately for Ron, uh, the hunter who he spared, uh, Mr. Eastman shows back up and he's like, hey, and he kills the guards. And he's like, ah, now we're he says it weird, but pretty much what he means is they're square. They're all square. And that the next time he sees him, and then he says, I'll be seeing you around. So, and it's all ominous and shit. Yeah, he spared his life, so now he's saving his life. And now they're square, yeah. and now he feels okay to kill him. That's yeah, all that now means. He feels like, yeah, that's all that is. Now he feels like, okay, I can kill you again, because I'm not, you know, dealing with this. <laughs> I'm not dealing with this nonsense of being indebted into people. Shit sucks. <laughs> but, um, and uh, that's the end of that 20 minutes. So the so now psychic, we're getting a team together. The We've psychic the, lady seemed to have known that they were going to need George Eastman to play a part, and that's why she kind of encouraged him to spare the guy's life. Well, no, she didn't. Uh, Lord Jebster did not encourage anyone to spare someone's life. That was all Ron doing that because I think because they had been friends for so long. Well, she helped him disarm him with a whip, which probably helped him make that decision. I think she's actually. I I think she's that's part of her plan because she knows that he needs him. Yeah, is what I'm getting at, and I think she's just. Just basically moving people into the positions that they need to be to be able to get these people to where they are going to be safe. Because yeah, she that's even true. she seems like she knows that if she does certain things, then the outcome will be what she wants. Because she actually sacrifices herself in some ways later yeah. on to make sure that Ugh. everybody can get to where they need to successfully. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. But like I'm saying here, when I was watching this and all of a sudden George Eastman starts working kind of with him or to save his life, I think that that was Laura Gemsner trying to make sure she got the outcome that she needed because yeah, she true. seems to be able to know what people are going to do and she can kind of predict the future when she needs yeah. to a little bit. And the psychic powers in this range all over the place from Carrie to, oh my God, that's the dude from Legion. Don't fuck with him. Yeah, Her right. power. <laughs> and yeah, everyone's powers changes constantly as well. So it's kind of weird. <laughs> right. And it just, it's to fit the story and to make it move on. And it's just basically a work. And it's not that big of a deal because, I mean, they basically say they're mutants. They don't all fully understand their own powers half the time, you know, or just how strong they might actually be because they haven't really been in an environment that's been safe enough for them to develop their powers so yeah. you know like a, a lot of them are still learning and you know they're fighting for their lives to get out of this situation where everybody wants to kill them so it makes sense that laura gemsner whose character was able to control her powers a little bit more would go looking for someone to help them get out and that's how she ran into isle cliver's character uh the that's mad true. max yeah. knockoff guy and because she can kind of see the future and because she knows the, she can kind of predict what people are going to do, that's kind of why she latches onto him. And that's why I'm thinking that this is her kind of moving things along. Like her character has got to be way more important than what they yeah. first initially show, because by the end of it, you know, for sure she is doing stuff yeah. specifically to make sure that everybody gets out safe. And that's why she makes that choice. And she, I mean, they don't make it like super obvious, but that's kind of, you, you can figure it out is what yeah, I'm getting Yeah. Yeah. You, you get it. You get it figured out. And but yeah, there's always going to be that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I mean, it's a, it's a, so far it's a fun movie. And, 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 and again, we're getting the classic, uh, uh, we're getting the, uh, the classic everyone's, uh, you know, getting the ground, getting the gang together, you know, uh, for a caper, if, if nothing else. So, uh, I like that cause it's that classic kind of thing. I always like that getting the group together. Yeah, you know, everyone it, is, it feels you know what like escape from these are, it feels like escape from New York at this point. Yeah. yeah they're really all just does. kind of banding together, but the mission isn't to get the president out because these no. guys don't give a shit about your country or your president. No, no, no. 
they 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 want the gold. I, we don't even know if there is a country. <laughs> right. They want the gold. They're been, they've been promised gold, and that's the only yeah. reason that they're doing it. Or at least yeah. that's what Al Cliver's character is telling himself. Because much like the Mad Max that he is patterned after, he wants to believe that he's selfish and that he doesn't care about anybody else. But he always ends up helping them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, fun for everyone. Uh, <laughs> we can move on. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, the next 20 minutes here, and it starts out with, uh, they meet up, uh, and Laura Jemser has more people with her, more mutants. So, uh, they're like, all right, well, it's a few more people than we thought we were taking, but, you know, you have to deal with that. And, and, and sometimes that's, uh, that's the shit you gotta do. So they start driving, they get into cars. I love, uh, Ron's car, by the way. It's so 80s dystopian chic. It's the best. Uh. Yeah, instead of a hood, <laughs> he just has, like, chain link grade across the top of his engine and shit. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it really is so it looks, I'm like that's pretty fucking cool it looks like those fucking dirt track race cars that my uncle used to fucking run <laughs> basically yeah, yeah yeah but it has like cannons on it and shit like that right so. right but like the base of the car is literally like just enough to call it a car and make it be able to drive on one of those dirt tracks yeah <laughs> and they put some sheet metal over it but sometimes the cars aren't finished so it, they just do shit like that with the fucking chain link yeah yeah right so it's like that's kind of fucking cool then uh they come across some dead mutants and that is our next clip regressive mutations the first specimens i've ever seen why are you so surprised by them Men and animals have the same biological origins. Fallout has had a catastrophic effect on the DNA factor. Creatures are being born today with genetic manifestations that reflect back to our primordial past, even as far as when water was our natural habitat. Look, gills, fins, scales. It's involution. In other words, man is retracing his footsteps. Let's move on out of here. Come with me, Professor. Hey, Professor, you uh, know how to use a gun? Yes, but the others don't. You shoot a man, you remain detached, distant. You see his body fall, and that's that. But a telepath feels a mind drowning in terror and misery. It's as though he were dying himself. No, they would never kill. Not even in self-defense. That is why they are better raised than we are. Their days are numbered. This fucking doctor still sounds like a goddamn Nazi, man. The way that he's talking. He, yeah, he really does. I'm, I'm like, I don't know, Doc. you fucking me up here, buddy. Uh... <laughs> like, I like that you're trying to protect and help these people and that you admire them, but can you stop talking about how they're a better race than something else? Can, yeah, we, can we all I mean, just not be people that coexist, Doc? Do you have to, like, pick a side in that nature? Right. And it's like, uh, geez, Doc, you're, you sounded a little, I don't know, man, uh, not all that great. <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're not doing me any favors here, Doc. <laughs> yeah, he's not helping. <laughs> he thinks he yeah, is, but no, he's not. I, I, yeah, I get it. You think you're you're doing the Lord's work, but uh... <laughs> could you maybe be a little less, you know, fash about it, dude? Yeah, can we uh, can we not be as fascist uh, all the time? I know it's hard, but just maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on. All right. Uh, so anyway, they come to a town and they think about trying to go around it, but there's not enough time. So they're going to investigate it before going through it. Then all of a sudden some people in cloaks come out and that is our next clip. We are servants of the Lord. We belong to a world apart, a community that respects the will of God. But do not fear us strangers. Our eyes are closed forever to the horrors of the world. It's blind. Have you traveled far? From the town. That's interesting. We don't often have visitors from the town. We heard the sound of your trucks. You must be traders. There is much we need out here. Life is hard. We have to survive as best we can. I might be interested in buying new habits. Our clothing all comes from the city. Or did you bring edible produce? What sort of goods have you brought with you? Why don't you tell me? We can exchange things with you. Sure, it depends on what you got to offer. <sighs> How did they manage to see the shoot? I don't know. Well, they're not the greatest shots I've ever seen. Lilith, how can they see us? Through your eyes. They have a telepathic prisoner. They're forcing him to transmit images to their brains. Is there any way you can block his transmission? I can't. The impulses are too strong for me. Where is he? In the last building on the street. The tallest. 
So uh, we get a big fight out of this. Lots of kind of cool deaths. This is a very long action scene because it's the group versus uh, an entirety of blind people. Uh, monks or whatever they are. So, But they're being uh, led by a captured telepath. And yeah. that's what Al Cliver's character is focused on is going to take care of the telepath. The shootouts and all of this is a lot of fucking money. And this is basically a war that they go into against these folks, basically. Yeah. So, but it's still a good time. Yeah, it's a full-fledged uh, battle like you would expect whenever units encounter each other during a war. Yeah, agreed. So, uh, uh, fun stuff there. It's a good fight scene and, and, and war scene because there's guns and shit, too. Well, and so, at one point, grenades start going or getting lobbed yeah. at people, and there's some really good stunt work where the guys are, like, jumping from the explosions and doing the flips and stuff like that. Uh, there's And there's not, like, there's no less than, like, six of those shots where people are getting blown up and doing jumps yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, it's fucking <laughs> they're cool, constantly man. mowing people down. And the thing that's the thing that's also really well done with this is some of our folks that are supposed to be our heroes, they're taking hits and they are actually getting hurt, but they're continuing to yeah. fight. Yes. So it's, it's very not realistic. Like, it's not it's just not like just G.I. The heroes Joe. kicking ass. Right. You know? Yeah, like like in Warriors of 2072, where you're like, how are these or no Raiders of Atlantis, right? Where you're like, how is this guy killing people with that much with one revolver, right? Yeah, right. And you're like, uh how many shots is in that six shooter? Because it, it feels <laughs> feels like a lot <laughs> right these guys at least have guns that you see them reloading in this yeah right so i'm just i'm just trying to say uh, what the damn hell uh <laughs> yeah, no, at this point i am 100 percent convinced that if i'm pretty sure that joe damato he said it's his favorite film and i can see why this is his favorite film but i'm also sure that he thinks this is his best film and if that's the uh-huh. case i 100 percent in this sequence can see why he would feel like that because this is really well done filmmaking. Like he has really done something with this film. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's cool, man. I mean, it's, it's fucking cool. It's one of the better Italian, just straight out action flicks that I've seen. And it actually has a cohesive story that it follows and goes through, which it definitely beats out Fulci's last one that we just did. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm enjoying this. And, it's and really the, fun. And the Fulci one, as far as story goes, actually made way more sense than Raiders of Atlantis, which made absolutely no sense altogether. Yeah. Raiders of Atlantis was just massive confusion. Um, <laughs> and it, all three of them, don't get me wrong, are a fucking total blast. But if you want like the most coherent, easy to follow, and with the best filmed action of the three of them, go with Endgame. For sure. At this yes. point, I can tell you that 100%. This scene clenches it right there. Yes. And this is the, the, the best way to go about life uh, is Ed game. Yeah, if, if you're, you're going to watch these Yeah, things. if you're going to try and find any of the three of them to watch after we've talked to them, make it Endgame be the first one that you go find, for sure. Yes. So, alright. So, um, anyway, during the fight, uh, of course, Ron is uh, able to get in and uh, he finds the group. They're kind of surrounding this chained up dude uh, and uh, who's the, you know, uh, the the uh, the uh, mutant and uh, using an axe, he swing he throws it, impales the uh, mutant in the head, killing him. And it looked like he goes- was going to try and free him, but he was outnumbered, yeah. and he just made the best decision he could make, which was just nip it in the bud and kill the guy. And it's not like he was not like doing the guy wrong the guy was chained up you could tell tortured to do this so probably putting him out of his misery at that point well there's that but also i think it was this was a hard choice that he had to make because you see him hesitate before he does it and then he does it yeah which is already his character has grown that when we first meet him he wouldn't have hesitated he would as soon as he got near the guy he would have killed him to to just simply end it you know yeah but now he's 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 having growth because he's like ah oh, these people are you know they're okay uh, and, and they're just people like me well Hanging yeah. out with Laura Jemsner is bound to make you a better person. Right, yeah. And so anyway, they all go blind again. They're like, oh, I'm blind. I can't see a thing. It's like, yeah, man, that's what you've always done. Uh, anyway. <laughs> okay, so, so as great as the battle sequence was, them trying to sell how they're blind and they can't see anything, and then you just hear them constantly yelling they're blind. I'm hoping yeah. that was just the dub because that was so fucking dumb I know. And bad. I'm, I'm blind. I'm blind. <laughs> We're like, yes, we know. That was the whole fucking point. You don't have to keep announcing it. Yeah, yeah. And so, okay, the, everyone just kind of leaves, uh, lets them leave, you know, wander around stumbling. And, you know, they're all like, oh, I, I can't believe I'm blind. Then they, when they leave, they run over one of the guy's heads. That was pretty good. Um, Actually, decent dummy work. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, 
Yeah, and a good crunch. Yeah, so, the sound job. effect is what really sells it. You're right. That crunch yeah. was excellent. The crunch was it was sweet. That's why I like made a special note of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm, gotta really remember to bring that up. It, That's some good stuff. The crunch was as sweet as that first bite into a honey bunch of oats. Yeah, right. <laughs> Before it gets soggy in the milk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Before the milk gets soggy. That's exactly what that crunch felt like. (laughs) So, anywho, um, anywho, uh, that's the end of that 20 minutes, by the way. Uh, So, (laughs) there you go. If you have anything else to say. Uh, Again, I'm uh, I'm both proud of us and ashamed of us that we likened the sound of a head being smashed (laughs) to the crunching into a breakfast cereal. (laughs) And we both knew specifically the sound right as I said it. That's really like, that's kind of cool that we both went there but i'm also kind of ashamed that we use that comparison i'm ashamed yet happy uh, <laughs> it was that satisfying of a crunch though yeah it really was so good times had by all okay well, uh, we've we definitely talked about it but we, and, before we move on i'll go go ahead yeah. you had something oh, i just wanted to say that 20 minutes seems to go quick but it's a lot more action i mean this from now on out you have what i would call 10 minutes maybe of five minutes even of dialogue and from the rest of the way out and then more just huge action scenes. There are moments of character development that we have coming in here like you talked about, yep. but it's not wasted because it is learning more about the characters and seeing what the mutants are capable of when they get some respite, when they can relax and feel safe for a little bit because we do get that a little later on. But, yeah. but also we kind of see a little bit more about our hero who is opening up and we see that he's a little more human than he wants to admit and that he is changing and that he's growing, you know, and Laura Jemsner actually is making him a better person as we know she will for just yeah. about anybody. <laughs> I'm being right? facetious, obviously, but still in this character, this character, anyway, she seems to be like a coach kind of person where she sees the potential in everyone and lets them find a way to live up to it themselves. You know yeah. what I mean? Like she's totally Ted lassoing every person in this fucking show. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but Hey, it's a good time. Right. Uh, but you're absolutely right. It just starts to accelerate its pace and it becomes a sort of like chase film where when they do get to actually catch their breath and you know that they're safe after a battle or what have you you don't begrudge them that because you yourself are like holy shit how much more do these people have to endure you know yeah right and that's kind of the pattern that we stick with even at the end of this battle where everybody's got a little respite and there's a little bit more talking and it just slows down just a little bit before they move on you actually don't begrudge them that at all because that battle was so intense you need a break too yeah you're like holy shit Woo. I need to I need to breathe here. Yeah, I've never had a Joe D'Amato film draw me in just like this one does. Like I was really into this the entire time and yeah. it just breezes by. It really does. Even the slower moments move so fucking fast. Anytime I had to pause it for anything, like to go refill a drink or anything like that, I was like, holy shit, another fucking 20 minutes went by already? That felt yeah. like nothing, you know? Yeah, it does it does. It, you really you're like, all right, I guess. Let's let's be cool, guys. Uh, let's be cool, movie. Yeah. This shit's going quick. It goes quick yeah. because it is enjoyable. But that is also the thing that makes it a, a notch above the other two in my book is that this yeah. is by far the most entertaining and the most like kept my attention the most out of all three. Yeah. But yeah, fun. It was all fun. Yeah. Was good times. And I'm not saying that the other two were not also we're, we're, awesome in their own yeah. way. It's just we're that we're kind of doing the end of the movie review and we're not near the end of the movie yet. <laughs> No, but that's just the thing is I'm fe- this is how I'm feeling while I'm watching the movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I I I'm good to talk about it like that even though it's the end of the movie discussion and, and the comparison because we've done all three of them and they were all purchased together. I feel like that's the way to discuss them. That's true. Uh, <laughs> we can move on though because you want to get yeah. moving, we can go. Why well, I, I mean I just want to no, no, you know, I'm just done. cuz we're going to say sir. a lot of the I same said shit good when day, we get sir. There. I dare you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> so they are resting and they figure out that the best route to get them to their pickup point, they just kind of are talking, hey, we need to go here and here. All right. Uh, then Ron, he finds LG and the boy moving rocks. And that is our final clip. How did you do that? It's a pretty good trick. Oh, Shannon, I didn't realize you were watching. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. He's the only one of us who can do things like that. What you just saw is nothing. His mind is amazingly powerful, but he's still much too young to control it. I've been teaching him slowly. He could give us away without even knowing it. No, no way. I keep his mind in a state of constant hypnosis, as if he were dozing. 
No outside emotion can reach him. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. But I'm beginning to understand why they want to kill all of you. We've always been persecuted. You know, this lake was alive once. People used to come here on holidays. There was windsurfing, sailboats, swimming, and kids everywhere, laughing and playing. Green fields coming down to the shoreline. Wildflowers you could pick in armfuls. How do you know that? The professor has shown us his memories. As a kid, he used to spend his summers up here. Even though all the books and video information on ecology have been destroyed, they haven't yet found a way to destroy old people's memories. Scientists have access to that youth prolonging drug the presidents used to take. That's why he looks so young. Through his mind, the professor has shown us what life was like then. Well, how was it? I've told you. There were fish in the lake. There was hope. Now there's only putrid, stagnant water. Huh. Yeah, so. Basically there's the, a lot there. Yeah, basically the kid is Carrie. Yeah. But also and, he's super powerful, like even beyond that, where yeah. he may possibly have the power of the dude from Legion where he can rewrite reality however he wants. So he just, he's he's super boy of the apocalyptic age. And, uh, you know, he, he, treat him well. He's the fucking star child that showed up in uh, B to save the day you know, in the later series and stuff. It's yeah. every fucking post-apocalyptic world always has to have some kind of like wasteland Messiah type. And it's going to be this true. kid once he gets a chance to grow. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, good times. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not saying that in a negative tone at all. It's just that that's kind of the direction that they're going with it. And they do a great job of setting it up, you know, that he is super powerful here because that's going to be need to be pay off very much at the end. Yeah. But it's a good time. Uh, everyone's, Everyone's enjoying themselves. Uh, or at least they should be, because if they're not, it's their own goddamn fault, because this movie's really trying hard for you. Yeah, it's it's trying, man. Come on. it's We're, we're, we're doing everything we can for you, people. Help us out. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally this movie to you. Yeah, yeah, right. We're, we're trying to do something. All right. They start driving around. They see a woman who's all strung up and hanging there, and she looks dead. Um... And as they're checking it out, the doc wants to cut her down, but then Lord Jemser senses that it's a trap. The girl kills the doctor, and then the group, uh, they gets pretty mad. They're like, hey, how do you know? They're talking to LG about, hey, how do you know that it was a trap unless you are a mutant? And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a mutant. Sorry. You know, my bad. And There's a lot of mutant hate coming from that barbarian motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but all of them are a little all pissed off about it. And they're like, you know, and they, they're they asking uh, 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 Ron about it. Ron's like, hey, listen, man, all I'm important with is the money. I want the gold. That's it. And if we don't get them back to someplace, we don't get any gold. It's just that easy. And they're like, I doubt there is gold. Well, then we see the hunter guy uh ron's main nemesis is there he's like oh there's gold a lot of it but you have a new problem and then a whole mutant gang shows up and uh by the way i never even got to get into this a lot of the mutants like they look like fish or they look like uh uh, uh monkeys mixed with people you know planet of the apes type stuff or fish or scales and all that kind of stuff so that makeup uh, is not great too. and i just wanted it's to try and ignore it yeah but yeah the, but the scope with which they tried to go with this movie i'm willing to forgive the fact that the mutant stuff doesn't look that great because everything yeah. else is where they spend all the money the bullet hits the explosions all that stuff this makeup doesn't have to be good yeah exactly so um there's a big fight uh this is really bad uh a lot of the team is killed or captured uh except for ron uh his hunter nemesis and cyclops uh everyone else is killed uh except for ogre or the uh, you know the uh our big uh our big dude he's taken captured and then also laura is kidnapped by the gang leader uh, if we can talk about the fight here because it's that's the end of that twenty minutes, and before we go into the final twenty, yeah, the kidnapping in this and the much more efficient way that this uh, raving gang was hitting them, this was definitely the road warrior moment of the film, especially since the one fish dude that ends up uh, driving in has the two ladies with their tits out, and then another car has yeah. a lady with one tit out. Um, you know, at least we got some tits in this one because we didn't see any tits in the other two movies. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the lady strung up has her tits out. Well, that, and, uh, that part wasn't that great because she was 
was strung up. But yeah. the two ladies that were riding with the guy, their tits were out on their own volition, it looked like to me. Th- that's Yeah, that is very true. And that is exactly what was going on. <laughs> so so. I, I can, even though they're part of a rating team and they're bad, I can still be grateful that I saw some boobs. Yes, of course. Yay. But the, uh, these guys are definitely really f- efficient and they're like the, the fish guy is supposed to be their Lord Humongous, basically. Yes. But they made him yes. a fish guy. <laughs> because why not? Um, <laughs> because his makeup is terrible and that's why not. They could have just let that actor be the gross looking dude that he was without the fish face. Yeah. Well, that's that's also true. But hey, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. God damn it. Again, this is my second of complaint that I've had so far. Everything else I've absolutely loved. But yeah. And I was just trying to ignore it, but since you brought it up and discussed the makeup, I do have to say that like I'm I'm a pretty bad stickler for like animal creation makeup whenever you do that on people. Like uh-huh. you have to make it look at least as good as they did on Zubily Zoo, that shitty ass kids TV show. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but uh and if you can't do that, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Uh, so- if your if your animal makeup on people looks like something on a really low grade production of cats, then no. Just stop. Yeah, yeah, right. Just be be cool. Uh, I don't know why you guys can't ever just be cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. We can move on. I'm done. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. We go into the final 20. So, Ron and the Hunter, they're going to go after LG while Cyclops stays with the rest of the mutants. And he treats them like jerks. Uh, and so, uh, Ron and the Hunter, they get to the base. Uh, he speaks with LG telepathically. She lets him know that the Hunter is not his friend and wants to kill him. He's like, okay, I know that. And then the leader comes in and LG gets raped. And uh, I am now instantly turned off from this movie. No, thank you. <gasps> well, this is, I think they put this in here specifically for the purpose where she makes the decision not to tell Al Cliver's yeah. character what's happening to her as it's happening. Because he's asking. He's like, hey, it sounds weird. Are you all right? Yeah, he said she's he's getting, like, yeah. she said, he said something about he's getting flashes of blue, you know, yeah. because of what the guy's doing. So she is knowingly making a sacrifice and allowing her herself to be assaulted like this without saying anything because she knows he'll do the jump and they won't it'll, it'll be too soon and they're going to fail so she yeah. allows this to happen as far as i'm concerned is what i think the film's trying to do is she's allowing this to happen so that their success rate well the chance of success for them saving everybody and getting her out is so much better if sh- this happens because then yeah. the guy will be distracted and then the rest of the team will like be able to sneak in and do what they need to do and the film while it's happening doesn't really show that to you but when it's successful immediately after you can kind of infer that that's why she did it because she does she just lets she just lets him do what he's going to do without putting up much of a fight because i think that's the only way that she could make sure everybody got safely out yeah that is very true uh Still doesn't make it any better. No, it does. Uh, it absolutely 100% does not need to be in the film in any way, shape or form. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't enhance the film in any way, shape or form. But, you know, in the Road Warrior, there was rape scenes, too. So maybe that's why they put it in just to mimic that. But it's it's completely unnecessary. And it's a complete shift in tone from everything else that we've had in the film so far. Yeah. And the guy's even like, hey, uh, he's like, even like, look at me while I do it. You know, and he actually says it. I'm like, oh, good. Jesus. Christ. I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you adjusted that because i was going to use it as a clip either way yeah 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 yeah. i wasn't i wasn't going to say that whole thing yeah but Uh, he basically tells her to look at him because he wants her to watch him assault her yeah and you're just like oh yeah it's fucking fucking gross gross. and yeah i'm done talking about it we can move on all right cool um so uh then the two sneak in and we see the big dude is he's encased in cement to you know as trapped. And you're like <laughs> this post this post apocalyptic world has enough cement and bricks to wall the guy in. Yeah. I mean Jesus. <laughs> uh good for you I guess. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's basically like their solution to juggernaut is to encase him in cement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like uh okay. Uh cool I guess. Uh <laughs> Jesus Christ. You think you would build yourselves a much better shelter with that much cement instead of just using it to murder one giant dude. Yeah, right. But hey, all right. I mean, whatever. I'm not judging your lifestyle choice, Marauders, but I think you could have done better. Yeah, you probably could have done a little bit more. Um, I agree. Uh, You probably could have had more stuff to be done there. But hey, listen, uh, neither here nor there. Yeah, you could have Uh, built like a whole jail to house a bunch of different people with all that cement that you encased that guy in. Yeah, right. But hey, you know, fuck it. I guess. That's just uh, that. Hey, let's not. They want to do what they want to do. Let them do what they're going to do, I guess. Maybe Uh, they don't know how to tie a rebar together to make it strong enough. So they just did this. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? But either way, uh, 
uh, they get LG and they uh, are getting ready to climb the rope. And LG's like, ah, oh, the the big guy wants you to kill him or it wants you to kill him and he's like they're like i don't know we that would wake everyone up and we really can't uh fucking do that right now so i don't know uh what else to do for him and uh the hunter's like don't worry about it climb up i'll take care of this and he goes up to the big guy and pretty much breaks his neck but like turns it like so he i don't know man it's pretty fucking brutal yeah they must have put somebody else's hands in there so that the guy could move around yeah you know what i mean like it was like fake hands or something like that because it does look like he twists his head like almost completely off it was pretty grody yeah it was it was hardcore um it worked really really well yes it really did so anyway then the hunter starts climbing while the blood from big dude drips onto one of the mutants who wakes him up and they start shooting um and the hunter gets trapped in there and lg and ron then ron's like ah fuck it he's gone i mean he was gonna try to kill me anyway right so i mean fuck that shit uh might as well just get the fuck out of here and um and that's exactly what they do uh and they leave and you just hear gunshots and all that uh so anyway lg and ron they get back to the meetup point with uh cyclops and the rest of the people all of a sudden the government shows up and starts shooting and they kill cyclops uh he gets shot while trying to get back into the truck well, they have everyone else kind of just trapped and they're talking. The general's all pissed at Ron. And Ron has, uh, he talks to LG telepathically and they use the boy's powers. And so what Ron does is he just, he tells the boy to just tap into him. And then Ron kind of controls everything and makes all the guys like shoot themselves, hear horrible shit, uh, makes the general shoot himself and just kills everyone. Uses like machine guns that are just lying around to shoot the guys so they just massacre whatever government is sitting here okay can we just talk for a moment we heard earlier to where the psychics being forced to kill people with their psychic power they sense all of it and they are traumatized by it so does the kid pass that on to al cliver and al cliver is just gonna live with it or is the kid being fucking traumatized by this event uh no i think the kid is fine uh because the government was probably gonna fuck him up so i think he's like hey um uh, let's just uh uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and let you kill all these people using my power. Fuck it. Because yeah. the kid's not doing it. It's... But, like, it's, it's they're supposed to be able to sense it. So maybe that means that this kid is also sadistic and he likes the fact that he can feel them suffering. And yeah. so that might also be a big red flag as to maybe this kid shouldn't be left alive. Yeah, right. Uh, maybe, maybe the <laughs> government isn't so wrong in this, but I don't, I don't, I don't like saying that either because the government's always okay. Wrong. This is just some dark stuff that you just kind of have to think about here. Like, you know, because they discuss how the mutant telepaths would never hurt somebody and that yeah. they wouldn't even in self-defense because it would be like torment to them. So who is feeling that torment and who is okay with it? Because if it's Alice Cliver's character, then he's absolutely every bit as evil as they've been trying to portray him as before. And if it's yeah. the kid, the same fucking thing. He is absolutely as evil as the government was fearing. I think it's I think it's Ron. It's Ron's taking all this and he's just, the kid just opened up his power to him. Yeah. Well, okay. Let's just hope that he's not traumatizing this young man or turning him into a psychopath because either way, the kid being able to do all this stuff with someone else controlling him is absolutely horrifying. Yes, exactly. So uh, then, you know, with everything done, the helicopter gets there to take uh, the people away. And Laura asks him to come with, but he's like, I, you know, I can't. You you could see it in my mind. I'm not the guy who should be going to this new society of people. And she agrees, and so they leave. And then he gets his gold, and as he's going to get it, all of a sudden a bullet hits off of it, and we see it's the hunter. And he's like, hey, let's fight for it. Winner takes all. So then they start running at each other to fight one another. Roll credits. I actually like that they do the freeze frame where they're charging each other, where you don't really know who's going to win here, but you know that the psychics are all okay. And then it's just down to these two fucking psychopaths who's going to get all the gold when really they could just split it and it's no big deal. But they also, it's not just about the gold. It's about, hey, who's better? Yeah, it's macho fucking bullshit. You know what? And what I would like to see happen is that they both kill each other and they both die. Their blood's all over the gold. And then just some fucking idiot just goes walking by, finds it all and like gets a better life. He's like, all right, sweet. And that idiot in my fantasies is me, Matt. See, I thought it was me. (laughs) (laughs) Why would I fantasize about you getting gold and being happy? I don't know. I was kind of hoping just to be nice. I don't know, man. What the fuck? (laughs) You can fantasize that if you want, but I'm not fantasizing that for you. Come on, man. I'm not that nice. 
Oh man, I'm I'm too lazy to fantasize about it. Can't you just do it for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so true about you too. <laughs> I know. That's too I'm much like too lazy work. To come up with that fantasy. Can I don't. Do I, do I don't want to fucking dream about a better life for me. Won't you just dream for me? Listen, how about this? You dream about a better life for us both, and I'll just put my name on the paper. All right, we'll just turn it in. <laughs> <laughs> that is Matt in every group project he's ever had, folks. Goddamn right. <laughs> yeah, this absolutely was the most entertaining of all the films. The three things that really kind of drag it down for me are Al Cliver doesn't have the presence or the gravitas to pull off the kind of wasteland warrior Jesus that they're trying to make yeah. him out to be. No, no, it should have been. It should have been the director. He should have been. Yeah. The mutant makeups are absolutely terrible uh, in a lot of cases. There's a few of them here and there that aren't so bad, but they really kind of, they make the film look cheaper than the rest of the stuff does. And like all the outfits for the government dudes were so great that it's a much bigger disappointment to have these lame ass makeups. They look like the kind of face paint that you would get at a state fair. Yes, exactly. With like a, Uh, with a few like prosthetics here and there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's really about it. But the fight scenes are pretty good. Well, the action was pretty good. There is the third thing: the unnecessary rape scene completely ruins the oh. tone of the film for that moment. Yes, and just yes, it does. You can you can completely take it out, and it does not affect the plot in any way, shape, or form. And it's no. just salacious bullshit to put in there for the sake of it. And it yeah, really is it's just to make it more grody for yeah. some reason. Yeah, because that's Joe D'Amato. He's mean spirited yep. <laughs> in a lot yes. of his stuff, and he just probably wanted to include it. You know. Yep. Probably. And plus, I guess that somehow makes it sell the film. But I mean, I, I would much rather have seen Laura Gemser get into a consensual sexual scene without Cliver's character. You yeah, know what I mean? That, like, that would have been that would have been some business right there. Yeah. I or mean, even George Eastman's character or somebody else, you know, other yeah, than anybody. You did, I don't care. Yeah, Just cons- as long as it's consensual and happy. Right. That's all we and if you really wanted to have some more sex in your movie, then somehow make it consensual. The only reason yeah. they did that is because there was rape all over the World Warrior, because that's what those yeah. uh the what is it? The gay boy berserkers that uh, I think is what the name of the group was that Wes ran. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And those guys were off like raping some people that from the wasteland um, that were in that. So maybe that's why they included it. But like, yes, it shows just how horrible the guy is. But like, we didn't need it. We already saw how horrible it was because he was like Jabba the Hutting it with like naked chicks behind him on his vehicle. Yeah. I mean, we kind of we get it. I mean, we, we didn't need this. <laughs> <laughs> right. And those three things are kind I of love the- Jabba the Hutting it. Uh, Oh, shoot up. <laughs> Misawa Chewbacca. Misawa Chewbacca. Okay, so those those three things are kind of like my biggest major gripes about yeah, the film. Same. But, but all of the action sequences and everything else that's good about the film really redeems it from all of those three things to where I can kind of let it go and just keep enjoying it. Because it does yeah. bring you back after that, and we do see some more heroic moments with her and everything, but it just it's just kind of a waste and it doesn't need to be there. And you could have trimmed that out of the film and made it a little bit leaner. I mean, not that it needs to be leaner. It moves so fucking quick. By the time I'm done being disappointed about the rape scene, we're already on to like another bunch of action. Yeah, we're on a huge action scene. So right, and the rescue yeah. and everything like that. So you know, it it just I don't know. It it definitely is something that you know gets stuck in my craw about the movie for sure. Because um, I can forgive the makeup. But it's you know just a complaint that I had just because. And Al Cliver's acting, you forget pretty much most of the way through, and you just kind of go with whatever character they're trying to make him to be. Eventually. Yeah. But that fucking rape scene is just completely fucking pointless. And it does kind of ruin almost the end of the film, you know, Agreed. but you do kind of come back from it, but you still remember it and it's stuck in your craw. Yeah. 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 Just cause it's so, oof, it's just, yeah. Mm. yeah good god but overall the film overall, is absolutely entertaining absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. and you, unfortunately in the 80s you're gonna have sequences like that in post-apocalyptic films just you, the way it is yeah we luckily missed that in warriors of 2072 and we luckily missed that in raiders of atlantis although it was implied that that was happening when people were being murdered too yeah yeah but at least they didn't show it to us yeah at least they didn't like make us watch it <laughs> all right so that's really the kind of the only real downer about the entirety of the film everything else is a total blast the fight sequence between the blind folks that are using the psychic uh fucking mutant to be able to see where they needed to go and project the image into their mind for them to be able to fight that yeah. that sequence that battle was absolutely awesome and hands down the pinnacle of the film all the other fights that happen after it are even cool too and the chase scenes and all that stuff is super entertaining 
beginning, but that fucking little mini war that they have is yeah, that little mini fight is pretty cool. That's the thing that I would probably use to try and sell that to folks. Where I was like, they do a sequence where they do a, a knockoff from the Omega Man, where the cultists are coming at him and they're machine gunning. He's a machine gunning down the cultists. You know, yeah, right. they do a play on that that is actually really good and is like every bit of fucking war sequence that you got to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's a whole different movie. <laughs> right. But all the different disparaging elements that this is borrowing from, from all these different films that they're just like taking some various influence that we've pointed out, it actually mixes it together well. And in this world, you believe that they would run into these various like groups of people surviving however they can the way that yeah. they can. You know, like them using a psychic mutant to survive when they're all blind, you know, that actually kind of makes sense in the context of everything else we know about what's going on in this society. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good times, though. <laughs> yeah, it's like a tour through the wasteland and fucking Judge Dredd. You know, it was basically yeah. what we, we got out of this movie, but like in a really entertaining way, too. So yep. this one definitely over the other three I recommend, but all with a caveat warning of that rape scene is fucking horrendous. Yeah, it is bad. So fuck that shit. But everything else, pretty good. <laughs> All right. Why don't we move on? We'll do a little quick sigh up news story and then we'll just get out of these people's lives. Yeah, let's do it. All right. We're going to play another song here. Who knows what the fuck I chose for the pirate radio edit. But if you're listening in on the main feed, once again, something from the soundtrack of the film. When we come back, we'll do some sigh up news. that song that I picked fits the movie well or at least is uh, something that's fun for people to listen to I, I at least picked something decent that I liked I hope <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, right. to be here who knows and if you're listening on the main feed and not the pirate radio edit you're listening to the soundtrack of the film so congratulations slash I'm sorry depending upon how that turns out well hopefully everything went well for us uh, <laughs> uh, you know I mean Jesus Christ <laughs> well if nothing else people are tired of waiting for it so let's give them some psyop news Darren. That's our man, Darren, from the Psycho Semantic cast, waiting over a year and some change, and probably coming up on two years since he's heard from Matt. I mean, I don't know why he had to bring that up. I got Botox it. in my scrotum. I did. Um, couple arrested after allegedly having sex on Cedar Point Ferris wheel. You can't pay your bail? Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. <laughs> Cedar or Point. Yeah, a man and a woman were arrested at Cedar Point on Sunday after four witnesses told Sandusky, Sandusky police they saw the couple engaged in sexual intercourse on aboard one of the rides. Shoot some fucking ropes. According to the police report, David Davis and Heather Johnston, both 32 years old, were allegedly seen having sex while on the Cedar Point attraction giant wheel. Let's jack two, it or something. The two were confronted by Cedar Point police sergeant and security before the Sandusky police department was called. A group of witnesses, including two juveniles who were in the cart below Below the couple said, dude, totally awesome. Afraid of vaginas. <laughs> Uh, the two initially denied any accusations. Johnston reported to officers that she had shorts on under her dress uh, and dropped her cigarette pack out of them. And when she picked them up, Davis helped her. Witnesses told police that they felt the cart shaking and saw the man and woman both expose themselves on the ride. Vagina smells the, like dead body. A couple later admitted they were engaged in sexual intercourse. Davis and Johnson were both arrested and transported to the Erie County Police Department where they were charged with the misdemeanor of the first degree. That or they just had a bukkake mouth part. Um, I mean, listen, people, I get maybe wanting to spice things up a little bit, but uh, come on. Everyone will be coming on my face. 
but please don't. Uh, <laughs> especially not on a Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Shooting a fucking what a lame ride. I mean, I guess I got to get it. What a lame ride a Ferris wheel is. You got to do something to keep it entertaining. <laughs> I think having sex on a teacup would be much more fun. Like those spinning That's around something. like tilt-a-whirl things. Especially in like. Yeah, if you can make, I think, you know, the one, you know, the one that's like a G-force one that goes really fast spinning, try that one. Oh, the Gravitron or whatever they call yeah. it, where the floor supposedly yeah. drops out? Let's try that, huh? <laughs> let's see, let's see what you got. See, let's amusement, see how well you can do it. Amusement, park, amusement parks are missing a chance, right? Where they can do amusement parks off after dark, right? Yeah. And they can just basically let these fucking kinky ass couples that want to fuck on the rides, fuck on the rides, and they just spray it down and clean this shit out like somebody puked on it or whatever, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And sanitize and, it. And just as long as it's everything's consensual, just go ahead. Yeah, like that's like like a like swingers should just rent out one of the parks, right, and then just go yeah, right? fuck everywhere they want to fuck, just, oh and then they God. just clean the they clean the place down and sanitize it afterward. <laughs> no, and what would be wrong with that? Yeah, because what is wrong with what this couple did is there are people that just wanted to go there with their families and enjoy the yeah. ride, and they are doing this in public, and it is indecent exposure at the very least. You know, what it I'm is. Saying? It really is, and also apparently filled with fucking narks. No. <laughs> well, like, you know, you see people fucking in public. You're going to tell somebody because you saw some yeah. people fucking in public. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if I tell security, but if security asks me, like, yeah, I saw some people fucking in the park. No, no. I'm sorry. I yeah. wouldn't tell security. I would tell somebody else where I'm like, dude, dude. These, this fucking couple was going at it on the fucking tilt a whirl. It was I, awesome. I'm I'm scared of heights, so I'd be like, stop shaking this fucking thing, you assholes. <laughs> right. Like, us on a Ferris wheel is not a great idea because of the heights issue, definitely. And then yeah, seeing I'm... some other people fuck on that, you're like, oh, what are you crazy? You want to die? <laughs> you fucking maniacs. <laughs> what are you doing to me? Well, that, like, uh, bar Ferris wheel thing that was in Vegas that we went on, yeah. like, that, yeah. that, on, that in of itself, just being up on that platform... <sighs> And you Man, know, people I'm, already, are, I'm getting anxiety thinking about it and, because, oh, that was that was rough. And, you know, I'm people, glad I did it. You know, but, people ooh. rented that fucking bar car and you know that there had yeah. to be some swingers that were like getting off on that. Right. Oh, probably. Yeah. Because yeah. you didn't have to have a bartender there with you. You could just rent no. the car out. Yeah. And you, you know, there's just, some people that are just like up at the height of there. They're just getting it on above the city and just having a good old time. But nobody yeah. else can see them in that car really when they're there. So that at least is like somewhat OK. You know, yeah, it's right. still but, public indecency in some cases Oof. no i'm not so yeah, sure exactly, I, but i'm not so sure that i have a problem with like I, I you know people getting naked in public is different but, but like people fucking in public you don't want like it's possible that kids could see that you know then then i have yeah, more of an yeah. issue with it but that's like, a more indecent yeah. yeah but like somebody who's streaking you know and just 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 to be a dumbass or whatever like yeah i don't think that the, We're going streaking. right i don't think that that is necessarily as bad as like people who are like fucking in a dumpster right on plain view for everybody else but yeah, the only unfortunate thing is, I mean, way to go. You're now on the sex offenders list, probably, even though they <laughs> probably shouldn't be, but they're going to be. Well, so. it's committing a crime and of, of a sexual nature as well. So it, it makes sure. sense. If somebody can get put on that registry for like whipping it out to take a leak at a fucking public yeah, park. That, and I don't agree with that either. It's like, all right, listen, should they do that? No. Should they be on a list for the rest of their lives? No. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of hard because it's still indecent exposure. So and no, it's not hard. But if it's, it's at exposure. like if if they if they get caught doing it at like two in the morning, they, they should be able to get it. They've got something mentally wrong if they go to a, like a park and take a piss at like you know noon on a Saturday. I get that you know that that someone has a problem and they need to be dealt with. But if it's two in the morning and some drunk takes a piss and then all of a sudden it's like, well, congratulations, your life's now over. <laughs> <laughs> see, this is where you're bringing it in where, where I can see where you're taking the stance that you're taking because at two in the morning, you may be drunk enough to need to take a leak at a yeah. public park. Yeah. If you're walking home, you're, you're being responsible. I'm not going to drive. I'm going to be responsible. Then all of a sudden, you know, the need hits you. Oh, better just piss your pants, pal, because <laughs> pissing your pants is a lot better than getting caught doing something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the way that Matt Syhop would like to put it. And with that, we're going to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> going to play the ending legion promo and then after that some more music that i found that i guess or hope will fit with endgame and then some more of the soundtrack if you're on the main feed here we go if you enjoyed this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero ghost show 
Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. So hopefully I found something worthwhile for the pirate radio edit for everybody that the four of you that listen to it, counting me, maybe five. Yeah. <laughs> and I edit it. That's why I listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I found something that fits and everybody liked and had a good time with for that music. And if not, you're on the main feed. You're probably going to hear the soundtrack. And hopefully we can get away with it if everybody would just fucking be cool. Yeah, everyone just be cool. All right. I mean, be Fonzie. All right, be cool. Weird little fucking Pulp Fiction-ish kind of quote yeah, there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Fonzie is cool, though. It's kind of hard to argue. The man can punch a jukebox and make it play any song he wants. Yeah, he jumped a shark, all right? And he gave us a whole thing of jumping the shark. <laughs> All right, if you'd like to find other instances where we have made references to Fonzie and Happy Days, I don't think that exists, but any other chance that it might be the previous 366 episodes that it could reside in would be found at legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. Please do not put in another dash. (laughs) Yeah, come on. That's a lot of dashes. (laughs) <laughs> or too many hashtags. Yes, I sincerely hope that our URL does not have another fucking dash put into it. That would really be yeah, great. Please, that'd be nice. <laughs> One of the places that you can discuss how many hashtags and or fucking dashes are in a URL is our Legion Discord chat, where uh, some listeners of the show have actually joined in as well. Matt was there for a little bit, but hasn't been back. Uh, uh, I'll be back in. It gets quiet here and there, but then again, some of us all start talking about movies and having a good time. So in the t- yeah. it's all there. You can go back and read through it and you know, kind of get into the conversation wherever you're at. Recently, we've been talking about the new Orphan prequel. You know that movie Orphan where it's supposed to be a grown woman that is pretending to be a child? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They did a prequel to that that I guess is out there now where she is even younger and this is like the first time that she killed a family and did what she did. Damn, nice. So, right. yeah, that that's interesting enough, I suppose. I might want to check that out. Um, but it's been talked about in the Legion, Legion Discord chat enough to where I'm actually really more interested in it than I thought I would be. Yeah. That's cool. Just to give you an example, you know, that's kind of what we talk about there. Just nerdy, geeky shit and sometimes just everyday life stuff as well. So there you go. Yeah, right. So fuck it. Good times. If you don't want any of that bullshit and you just want something quick and easy, you're going to have to check out our cinema underscore psyops Instagram feed where the memes are posted daily. I almost have a time frame in my new job to where I can kind of get away with it, but I've been forgetting because I've been busy trying to set up my new environment and just be a good little employee because I'm very happy at this new place. Yes. (laughs) Be a good worker bee. (laughs) Yay, capitalism. Well, actually, it's not for capitalism. I'm actually working for a cause that I can believe in, but I don't want to talk about it too much. 
touch oh, on the well, show because go. I don't that's want it to though. fade back into the company that probably wants their fucking privacy and not to be linked to this goddamn podcast. That's also true. <laughs> so anyway, Instagram, cinema underscore psyops, where the memes are posted thrice daily, usually on a schedule, and I'm trying to get it back onto a schedule. Then it's shared to our Facebook group, Cinema Psyops, and as well as my main feed, Port Psyops. And of course, the show has its own page that you can go and like over there on Facebook if you want. But I mean, Facebook is mostly fucking dead to us anyway anymore, so yeah. we don't care if you do or you don't. It's fine. If you're on Facebook... You're fucking dead to me, meta. <laughs> if you're on Facebook, do it. If you're not on Facebook, just join the Legion Discord chat if you want to hang out with us and chat, because I'm there a little bit more than I am on Facebook these days. Yeah. And then, of course, there's always the feedback through email where you can write up the entire diatribe of whatever you'd like to to tell us about how great of a job we have finally done for once in our entire lives. We finally nailed it with episode 367. See, I told you I was trying to be more positive, Matt. Look at you, being positive. Yeah, we've finally done it. We've finally done the review that ends all reviews in episode 367, and you can't wait to tell us how amazing we were. You can do that at cinemasyopscord at gmail.com and email me feedback there. Yeah, and be nice to us, too, because, you know, we're hurt. We're hurt people. Well, while you're out there realizing that hurt people hurt people, kick the fuck out of this weekend. Make it your bitch. I didn't have audio on my side whenever I hung up, too, so something was definitely going on with that Skype connection. I'm glad we just redid it. Yeah, right? I'm uh, (laughs) grabbing the files out of the drive right now. Since I have fiber at the house, it probably shouldn't take too awful long. Yeah, and I am recording now, so there we go. All right, I'm started the download. One, two, one, two, three. (laughs) <laughs> Starting to download here. Man, that was a lot of goddamn work moving that sectional out of that small area. I'm sure it was. <laughs> that sounded like it sucked. Well, I I wanted to help just because I didn't want them trying to haul it out of my house. Yeah. You know, just, just the two of them. And, you know, because she's short and he's real tall. And I was like, I'm at least yeah. a little bit taller, so it's a little bit better of a match. And plus, if we <laughs> fuck up the house, it's my fault. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about other people. Yeah, because I'm helping at least. And then, you know, I don't have to worry about them having having to be extra careful, not trying to scrub the house. And then I don't want them to, you know, have the furniture get damaged because they're nice enough to take it off our hands. Yeah, right. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm ready to rock. Um, I got your clips. Uh, There's seven, you said? Uh, Yes, seven. Okay. Um, Can you hear? No, you can't. What about now? Yeah. Yeah, you can. can hear that. Yeah, you can. All right. So let's fucking rock. I'll just play a little bit of the theme and then come in and we'll save ourselves some time here. Sounds good. Both of us have shit to do with our lives. Yeah, no shit, right? I seriously, I'm gonna like scarf a couple of these down and play these promos real quick. Yeah, play the promos, man. Get some food in you. <laughs> Outtakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we get it. I'll just punch it in later. Let's move on. <laughs> Damn, man. All right. It's a lot of important shit in there. Anyway, all right. So <laughs> it'll be in the episode, and we know what happened. We can move yeah. on. I'm glad you included this because it sounds so lame. They had to hear it. Shannon. Yeah. Shannon. Kurt is moving towards you now. <laughs> Apparently, she's a telepathic you robot. Yeah, yeah right. Friend. That's the way the game's played. <laughs> are you a mutant? Yes, brain mutation developed. You never ask a lady power. if she's a mutant. Some of us can just tell you. Are you a mutant? No, I just telepathically oh, I talk to you because I'm normal. I have to leave Fine. the city. <laughs> Can't you do car. this? I thought everyone could be a telepath. Every- we Everyone does know. this. What are you talking about? Why me? <laughs> I'm so That's fucking so delirious. Nice. We're MST3K in the clip. I know. <laughs> help and guidance perhaps one day we create a society where they will all have the faculty to read each other's mind this dude still sounds like a nazi a too he really does and incomprehensible. listen to the shit he's giving is an excuse to help them race i know like even conquer the earth and then <laughs> See? the universe yeah, yeah. i mean he wants just to just conquer the world more to hear what you want from me will you lead them out of the city with a race that he engineers basically only have one chance that screams nazi to me yeah big time 
more mutants. So uh, more what? And that's just more mutants. Thank you. So all right, what did I say? <laughs> you, just I mispr- you just mispronounced it. It's fine. I'll punch it. In and it. Fix I got gotcha. And this will be uh, an outtake. It's fine. All right, there you go. The servants of the Lord belong to a world apart. Y'all seen Mega Man? <laughs> Charlton Heston but and Omega Man. Strangers. Omega Man. Y'all Our seen eyes that? Are closed forever. Everyone remember that? Have you traveled far from the town? Creature of the That's wheel. Lord of the Infernal Engines. Well, that's what I thought was going to come out about that energy drink was that it was people. It must be traders. <laughs> it's so much blue. Need yeah. Here. What did you bring edible produce? What sort of goods have you brought? Why don't you tell me? We can exchange things with you. We will gladly exchange your death you for your goods. <gasps> no. How did they manage to see the shoot? I don't know. Well, they're not the greatest shots I've ever seen. This is how I'm going to pad the episodes. I'm going to fucking talk <laughs> shit through the clips <laughs> from now on. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They're not the greatest shots. They have a telepathic prisoner. That sounds good for them. I had a telepathic prisoner once. He wasn't that great because he didn't see that coming. (laughs) You're terrible. (laughs) If they caught him, he's obviously not that great at being a telepath. Right. (laughs) Speaking of having to piss, I got to piss, so let's wrap this Uh, up. (laughs) All right. Um, Let me bring up the show housekeeping. I don't know why I need this, but three, two, one. to us too because you know we're we're hurt we're hurt people well while you're out there realizing that hurt people hurt people kick the fuck out of this weekend make it your bitch <laughs> that's what they say right hurt people yeah hurt people hurt, hurt, hurt people hurt people yeah that's that's exactly it <laughs> <laughs> and i am done recording